Welcome to another episode of Splitting Hairs with Max and Nikki. I'm Max. And I'm Nikki. And together we're Max and Nikki. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about overuse of music in movies, TV, and other media and art forms. Um, well, I mean, theater too, actually. Um, theater, but I overuse of, a, 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 of the score for a, a movie or TV, mainly we're talking about that. Mainly we're talking about TV or movie, movie or TV, the score, um, and how it sort of... Or the soundtrack, or the soundtrack, actually. You know, yeah, or the soundtrack and how it... it You know, it can be a main perpetrator in trying to elicit emotions out of its audience. Well, we'll delve into that. We'll delve into that. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, But before we get into things, uh, we just want to make an announcement. Well, Uh, I mean, we we said this in our last episode, but we recently, our band Little Person just released a new EP a couple weeks ago. Uh, Please check that out on iTunes. It's called I Feel Fine. Um, You can go to our website, littlepersonband.com. And check it out there or, or littleperson.bandcamp.com, soundcloud.com slash little dash person. Oh, is it little dash person? It is. And uh, you, or go to our Facebook and just check us out on Facebook, littleperson.com slash little person band. Is that what it is? That is what, yeah, that is what it is. <laughs> you get second guessing everything. Well, I don't know. Oh, um, man. In any event, I sneeze. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we have but a show. We, I wanted to make a couple more announcements. Uh, uh, we have, our band has a show coming up this Sunday. If you're in the New York area, New uh, York City area. Right. This Sunday, April 23rd. 23rd we are um, um, 2017. Own, we're playing at a venue called Berlin, New York City. In the Lower East Side. And uh, in Manhattan. And uh, the doors are open opening at 7 30 p.m and uh, guess what we have like unlimited guest list spots so if you are truly interested in going to this uh shoot us an email uh or something like that and let us know like hey i'd like to go see this show and we'll put you on the guest list add right. some friends too if you'd like that you know and if you can't make it out to that one we do also have a show on may 11th at the Bowery Electric, and we'll be in the map room there. Um, and you can find that online. Uh, That's also in Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, not quite Lower East Side, but I would say more like bordering between Soho and Lower East Side, I suppose. No, isn't it near? Aren't those all, you know? No, well, I think the, con- con- well, don't, uh, the, Bowery, uh, the Bowery Electric is kind of closer to Broadway Lafayette stop. Anyway. In any event, let's get on with our topic for today. Music, uh, the way it's used in movies and in television, why we think that in general nowadays, um, maybe for the past 15 years Well, I would so, say more than maybe that. Maybe 20, 20 years. 20, 20, 20 some no, odd years. 20 years, I would 20 say. 20 some odd years. 20 years. 20, 20 some odd years. I would say 20, though. I'd say 20, 20 some odd. <laughs> but no, I, I I don't know if that's necessarily true for one for television. I think oh, it t- is for television, yes. I mean, you know, for example, Full House, you know, I mean. Oh, that is true. Okay, we'll get into that. Then Nikki is right. 20, 20 some odd years, actually. Uh-huh. Um. But then for movies, though, maybe it's more like 20 years, no? No, I would say 20, 20 some odd. <laughs> okay. Um, in any event, um, so what are we talking about, overuse of music? Well, basically, when we talk about that, we're saying that the music is used so much. Basically, the idea of mu- m- uh, music in a movie is to try and elicit some sort of emotional response or to try and complement the scene that's at hand or the emotion that's conveyed in a scene I or suppose. to transition us from one scene to another or it's or that or that um that's true and i think personally that's when it's used most effectively is when it is used uh where there is no dialogue you know um 
an acting teacher hold once on, but said. Let's, hold on, let's just fi- before let's just finish what we're talking about. So there's that, and what we're saying when it's overused is when it's basically the the movie or the television show relies on the music to try and elicit that response from the audience, the emotional response that they're trying to convey from. Uh, but it's or, not even that. Sometimes it's just kind of like. Why not, is this, not, not elicit a response, but they're trying to invoke a, a feeling in the right. audience they're with just the music, and, and basically what they end up what what ends up happening is it it makes that product whether whether it's it's a TV show or a movie it makes it cheesy because well, but that's not okay because that's it, it's in, cheesy, but what what's happening is. Uh, the movie or television show ends up relying on that too much in a way. And it it's either distracting from the movie or the television show, or it just reveals something about the television show, the weaknesses of the television show or the movie. Or the that, lack of confidence that or the, lack of confidence. the director slash composer had in the dialogue and, and the scene and itself. Scene, the scene itself. Right. Um, you know, and it's weird because even certain TV shows, it's kind of like this would be so much better if there wasn't this music here, right? But, um, I guess we'll get to that in a little. In bit. fact, it's become such a, th- it's so prevalent now that I actually dislike it. <laughs> I just almost dislike. Well, I scores altogether. Not all the time, I know, but I mean, if it's a musical, that's a different story. But and we'll talk about that in a bit too. But hey, even, even musicals can overuse yeah. music. But I yeah. just and I, I know that sounds I was talking kind about this subject with my older brother, our older brother recently, and it's almost like, I, unless it's used for transition, uh, you know, transitions between scenes, I actually just don't even like music in, in it at all. Well, I would say it, it it's good for montage scenes too. So it's good for good for montage scenes. Yes, and okay, that's true. I don't necessarily but whenever agree with you on on that point because no, I don't. I will talk. I mean, bring up the Hut Sucker Proxy. In no, a little I'm bit. not saying. And it's. I know. Oh, I don't. Like the way it's used in that. I'm oh, not. Oh, I'm not. I like it. I'm not saying that I dislike it at the, on those perfect moments. I'm just saying it's done so much nowadays that it's put a put a bad taste in my mouth when it's even used at all anymore during dialogue sure, sure. or in, in a scene that's not a montage scene, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So, and uh, one example actually that does this effectively where it's just during the transitions, I don't even know whenever, I don't think it's used at all. I don't think music is used at all except for maybe the beginning and in the transitions between scenes uh, is in the company of men. It's a movie with Aaron Eckhart, and I actually forgot the guy's other guy's name. Actually. But it's a Neil Laboot uh, film written and directed by playwright, usually a play, playwright named Neil Laboot. Right, um, and basically, it's like they they trust that the audience will understand the emotion and the well. It is very much and what a, and the a motion dialogue, being conveyed, it's a dialogue basically. heavy film, and it's dialogue heavy, and, and it's also not. And so you want to concentrate on that dialogue. And actually, it's it's a, the kind of, a kind of movie that doesn't really wallow in in emotion. It's it's and, very um, it's kind of the opposite of stop. <laughs> stop. It's sort of the opposite of. Sorry, Nikki's doing something with his hand right now, and it's bothering me. Why? Why is it bothering you? It's just annoying. No, God, it's, I'm not touching anything. Anyway, <laughs> take that out. <laughs> <laughs> <In> any, <laughs> anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is, uh, oh God, come on, man. I got allergies, man. I mean, right now, unfortunately, I'm going to be doing some blood work in the, tomorrow, but I had to like stop taking my antihistamines for a few days, and it's just like, oh, it's so bothersome. I just would love, I can't wait till tomorrow I have to take the blood test and I could just take my antihistamine. Okay, yeah, enough of, of that. So, um, enough about your allergies. Uh, what I'm actually allergic to is overuse of music. Um, and what the deal is, so there's, yeah, there's so that's many an example ways it can be in used. the company of, of men. Another uh, example is in Frasier. Um, and which is why I actually kind of think of it as kind of like a play in a way. A lot of episodes are done like a play. Uh, maybe it's part of it is in addition to the blocking in Frasier. 
um, Pamela Fryman, who's a director on a lot of the episodes, she was hired actually because she had experience with stage and they wanted her to direct as if it was like a staged play. Very staged very well. Block, they, blocking blocking is, is very great. Very good. Um, and, but that's a And show. like a play, uh, or at least a good play, sh- they there's no music going on during the Especially play. on the sort of emotionally heavy scenes. Right, and you it allow... Just, you, it allows the silence, even if it's an awkward silence, to really penetrate the scene. And, and, and that's part of... That's part of... The silence needs to be there because that's part of the expressiveness you know, of ex- uh, conveying a, the emotion. An acting teacher once said, if you can't improve upon silence, then don't try to do that. Right, you know? exactly. Um, so and, it, and so, uh, and, and they only, I actually can't even think, unless there's a montage scene, I actually don't even know, or if it's uh, diegetic, is that what it is? What yeah, it is? diegetic is always in, in the... When it, diegetic music, which is music that's in the scene itself. Um, like as if you were playing Like if there was a piano player in the scene and he was playing, or, or if the yeah, radio was playing music. Um, yeah, if the radio anyway, was playing music. Frasier, I don't even think they use music at all, except for the beginning and the and, end of the show and in transition. And, and when... Not actually, I'm really not even transi- sure. Not even the transitions, really. Now, transitions, no, because they no, usually they just have go like to the, the title card. The title, kind of, those cards, they're, they're, yeah, the... They, they kind of have never, each scene is kind of it's only uh, diegetic has, has a title like a title for each. There's scene only anyway. music in the way beginning in the opening credits and the closing credits, and otherwise there's diegetic music. And that's it or montage music. I guess I mean no no they tr- th- trust me because there's an episode for instance where Frasier is uh, his protege is like. All right. Well, it doesn't matter. I believe you. Let me just say he's trying to get new furniture in his household and he can't settle. Oh, right. right. His protege copies his exact, his exact layout of his whole living room. Okay. Okay. And then he's like, thinks of it as an opportunity for him to change his own living room because he likes I know okay I get it I get thing. it I get it it's and we don't need montage, to explain but it's a episode. funny episode you guys should check it out Frasier is the one of the best episode uh, TV shows of all time top um, five material also another TV show I mean I, I would say a lot of sitcoms of the 80s and 90s and, and before actually just until like the 2000s a lot of sitcoms a lot of TV shows, actually, in general, didn't really use overuse music at all. You know? Oh, that's not true. I mean, Full House did. No. Oh, yeah. You're right. You even mentioned that I before. Just so okay. I'm an idiot. Well, yeah. I would say, but a lot of TV, a lot of our favorite ones, like Seinfeld, they the only times that they would use music, and they would use music, non diegetic music, but there were usually montage scenes that they would do that for. They would never over. They would never use music over dialogue. Right. Basically, I mean, it's just distracting straight up. And here's so an it's, example it's actually, of when it's, it's it's saccharine when you when you try to overuse music. An example is Full House. Is Full House when and they it's really cheesy. It's they just you could cheesy. hear the music creeping in as a scene would become more emotionally heavy, and it, you could hear the music creeping in and. It would start to get louder. Right. And in the early episodes of Full House, it wasn't so prevalent, but, and that was because it was in the 80s, and the 80s were kind of better at this. But okay. in the 90s, it really started getting louder and louder. And, yeah, um, and it's, it's not only distracting, but you're basically, it's like you're playing down to the audience. You should play up to the audience. Take the audience for smart people who are watching a show, you know? Um, and I think people, and you might say, oh, it's just people watching Full House. Those people are stupid anyway. No, they're not. Because actually Full House, I think some of those emotional scenes are actually good. And the only reason you think they're cheesy and stupid is because the music is there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and in fact, there's uh, some fact- moments, there's, a, there's an episode where John Stamos is talking to Michelle about uh, his... His, uncle? his 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 grand his grandfather no it's not his grand his grand uncle I think is dies dies and he's crying and, and Michelle's and it's crying very, it's, it's very, very well touching. acted very touching and I'm just thinking to myself when I'm watching the episode why do they play music this is a good scene going on oh, right there's now. another episode where Kimmy 
you know, everybody forgets her birthday and it's a really emotional, very good acting from Andrea Barber and, uh, who plays Kimmy Gibbler. And, you know, you really see this side of Kimmy that you don't see bef- before and, and at other, t- other times of the show. And, oh, very good acting, very good emotion played, but it's, it, it is made slightly cheesy because of the overuse of music, you know. Now, don't get me, don't get us wrong. I mean, Full House can be cheesy, Obviously, just straight up very, at times without the music, even. Um, but sometimes, though, but there are moments. It's, it's, it's like those those music uh, those musical moments are cueing you, the audience to go ah, like Aw. exactly. And you know, I, by the way, the seventies and a little of the eighties did do it. Happy Days actually was a culprit, actually, of that. Oh, um, they did. Do unfortunately, that. I love Happy Days, but they did do that a, a lot of times, actually. And it was—it's just like take the audience to know, take the audience for smart people that they know they know when to, you know. Yeah, Cheers is a good show where not, they don't not, they don't really use music except for the beginning and end of the show, and maybe occasionally for a montage sequence but or or like transition scenes now you know? here's the thing that's not to i don't want to diminish the i don't want to diminish the um the job of a composer i mean we're composers that's what's funny about this conversation is we actually we love writing well, music and we love music for television we've and asked, film. we've been asked to write music for like you know, short film before and right. Check it out. By a the couple way. Of short films, and it's. I, I really think some it's of the that job music of the is editor our- and 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 director to know where to make the cuts of for the music. You know, like a, a composer is generally asked to make music for the whole thing. No, that's not true. Or that's not true. That's but- not true. So, no, sometimes the composer is asked to make the music where it's appropriate, and. That, I mean, that's the part of the job of the composer, I think, is to know where the silence should be used. Um, by the way, if you want to check out that some of that music that we wrote, I, we think we're pretty proud of it ourselves. It was for a short film called The Appointment. Um, and check it out. It was It's on a, a... SoundCloud. SoundCloud for what? Max and Nikki. Just check just out... Look, just look up Max and Nikki Weinbach Ma- SoundCloud. Just type that into Google. Right. Yeah. And it's... Uh, we like it. It sounds very... Lo- yeah, it, sounds, very, it sounds like a Bernard Herman type of story. I'm into basically. it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so I guess that, that, well, I'll, I'll talk about that. In, well, in any event, but, um, so, you on. know, there's, there's other, th- I mean, I, I do want to bring up good example, like jump tomorrow is another film where the music, I, I guess I don't really need to bring that up, but that the music is used sparingly, but in a very good way, only for transition scenes and Again, the music is really good, but sometimes it doesn't, sometimes though it can heighten a scene itself, you know, right. Like I'll give you an example. In the case of our, the the appointment film, actually that we did, where um, you know, if, if something well, like that, I don't want to bring it, up it our depends, own example. It no, depends on the intention of the director. It depends so on the intention. The, the Hudsucker Proxy, for example, um, they use music and said they use a Cachaturian score, uh, or our music. Cachaturian's a, a composer from uh, Armenia. Uh, and uh, they, you know, he he he's famous for the, the what is the sabra dance or is that his? saber dance? Saber dance. Well, no, I mean he's famous for a lot of stuff, but uh, but yeah, there I think that's what it's called, right? It's goes something you know, like. Da, 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 Anyway, um, uh, oh god, that's such a good scene with the hula hoop. Right. Oh. So that can that was a kind of a montage scene right there, but he also does it on a you know. He There's a dream it. sequence where he's uh, where Tim Robbins is going to kiss Jennifer Jason Lee's character. And it's a dream. Uh, it's, it's not that or, actually happens. Or, but it's it's a very the way it's shot. It's very kind of like a dreamy sequence, and the music creeps in right before they kiss, and the music. In this sense, when they do kiss, it's it reaches a climax, and it's just there's something about that kind of moment, right? That so isn't cheesy? I guess it's it is overly romantic. It's, it's com- complimenting, complimenting. The scene. And so I guess you have to have a, you have to have a good eye for or ear for these things you have about to know- knowing when it's making something cheesy as opposed to when it's making something when it's when it's heightening the feeling and and. 
Place, sure. Placing emphasis on the Place, feeling and complimenting it rather than right because sometimes as telling you yeah it, so it can be used in good ways you know but basically part of it is though that it, because it creeps in though as you said and it's not it's basically it's not interrupting the dialogue you know here's the thing though overuse of music is not just you know it doesn't happen today that happened a lot though I think in the 40s and 50s actually oh no oh it did. No, don't get me wrong. It actually happened in a lot of Alfred Hitchcock films. If you watch, um, no, I I think some of those really yeah no, too much music sometimes really? yeah like I think to catch a thief it's kind of like oh why is there just like music playing here it's it's so weird in a way like they just have this music in the background during this dialogue it's and that's just, not to say we thing. don't like some of the some of the music though especially back then it was really good music. Um, oh, well, ex- there's an example, a, a movie that I think is a great movie by uh, Miyazaki. It's a, called Spirited Away. I think the music is really good. I think the movie is really good, but it does overuse the score uh, sometimes. And it, it's almost as if it's getting in the way of the dialogue. And it's just like, I, I want to be able to hear the dialogue. And sometimes, sometimes music is overused in such a way that you can't even hear what they're saying and it just totally gets in the way, like in uh, the movie uh, The Departed. The, the Departed. There's certain points where I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? I can't even hear what they're saying because the music is so loud. Well, it's not or, even just that. It's just distracting. Yeah. I mean, you know, other movies, like Christopher Nolan is a big uh, culprit. culprit of this kind of overuse of music where the music gets so, like with Inception or Interstellar, the music gets so loud I remember I didn't want to. I didn't really want to see Interstellar, but I went with some friends, and you know, I, I you know, I didn't pay for it, so I, I saw it anyway. Shh. No, well, I mean, hey, what, you know, you know, I, I didn't pay for it. Maybe a friend did or something, you know. Um, oh, right. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe a friend didn't. You know, who knows? But um, the point is, uh, the music was so loud in that movie; it was distracting not only got in the way of the dialogue where I couldn't even hear what they were saying, it actually physically hurt my ears to hear how loud the music was. It was, you know, some, some of these scores today, they're just so loud. Sometimes it's just, it's yeah, like, sometimes it's like, it's bothers me. It, it, it physically bothers right, me. Right. Sometimes whoever is doing the mixing, I the mean, sound especially mixing. actually on, on amateur films too, the, they don't get a good mixer for the whole film in general, so the balance of the music to the dialogue is just is so off, and it's like it's either the music is either, either way too quiet or way too loud, and it's surprising when it's on a big budget film, and it's like I feel like they just maybe didn't get somebody that is uh, mixing uh, that is good engineer for mixing, you know, music, music actually. Well. Oh, by the way, I because just want to have to do with one singing movie, and, and one movie where and instruments it, silence would have been much much better, better than having a score was that movie Gravity, right? And in fact, in the beginning, in the beginning, they said, you know, you can't hear sound in space or something like that, right? It, sound doesn't travel through space or something. And right after that, after like a, a few minutes. They just start blasting the score throughout the whole movie, and you know and what? It's like yeah, the the scenes would have been a lot more palpable had they been deprived of music, right? Had they and been deprived it, of sound, really, and it would have been yeah, it just and also the the isolation feeling of just being the loneliness of being in space would have exactly would have been more uh, effective that feeling. If there was no music, because we would have this silence, it would have been just now. I, now I, here's we the thing hear, about we, did, we, we heard did, that the director Alfonso Cuaron didn't, didn't want, want all that music because he, it does look like a beautiful. It's a beautiful looking film. I will give right. it that. I, for I sure. do think there are some I mean, cheesy some things cheesy about things. the about dialogue, it. the script is not really. It's kind of a cheesy thing a little bit, but the the di- it's a very beautiful looking it's film. A, and it, and but, you know, it's kind of it's a cool and idea. So Cuaron, I think. Yeah. I think uh, from what I heard is that he didn't want all that music in there and sort of the studio forced him to have that in there. And apparently I think there's a director's cut where a, a lot of the music is not in there. Right. Or you know, like that. it just goes to show you the studio heads don't know what the hell they're doing sometimes, you know, yeah. or they're, you know, it's just, 
I don't know. They they assume they know what the audience wants, and they just play there's something they, scary they, and lonely about space and silence. Really would underline would have that, that. Would, yeah. would evoke that more than or music it into in, in the audience. Yeah, members, it would, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's these. So, movies. but anyway, I do want to bring up some good examples. Uh, oh, oh uh, the Hateful Eight, which came out a couple of years ago, or. Right, yeah, or a yeah. year and a half ago. Very good movie. Very good movie. I mean, just the score Tor- is really just good. A master and Neil Morricone did the the Ennio music. Mar- Marconi, yeah. And Neil Morricone or Mar- Ennio Ennio Mar- Marconi. Ennio, no, Ennio, I think. No, Ennio. No, no, because it would be the th- second or to last vowel is where the emphasis is placed. Usually in Italian, I think. Right. No, I know, but uh, we're American. We say Ennio. Ennio. I don't know, whatever. I don't, care. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. And anyway, um, he composed the music for it, and it's really good. Um, actually, funnily enough, is Ennio Marconi, I mean, just a little side note, Ennio Marconi wrote a lot of the original music for The Thing, I believe, for John Carpenter's The Thing. Right. And, and a lot of the music that didn't get used for The Thing he had been sitting on this score for a long time and he told Quentin Tarantino and Quentin Tarantino asked him if he could do the music for this movie, The Hateful Eight. He's like, well, I have... No, that's not... Okay. He asked him if he could do it and he needed it really quickly and, and, and Neil Marconi was like... Was like, I... He composed... He's like, well, maybe I'll compose a little bit of a theme for you, but you gotta handle the rest. And then <laughs> the next night, he's like, okay... I got the theme done with a lot of the variations and he gave him like a, almost half the score and, and you know in the couple of weeks remaining he gave him like a lot of it and he's like okay the rest of the film I have the thing score basically intact still and you could use that that it was from what he had written what he had originally thing. written for the thing but they ended up not using so it was still original um John Carpenter's the thing not the thing as if we were using you know some kind yes, of pronoun thing right. for Oh, and definitely not the Fantastic Four. Uh, well, that's that's. But I now you're really confusing the audience. I, hey, well, that's what I kind of um, like to do. Um, and anyway, the um, you know other. I mean, so, other, I just want to say the music is used. I think Quentin Tarantino knows how to use. He knows how to use music. He knows correctly. how to use not just a score, but he really knows how to use. Uh, music in general, it, like pre-recorded music. Right. That's, well, that's the thing. Quentin Tarantino usually. Never has a score for his films. He usually has soundtracks for his films. Uh, in fact, I don't know. Aside from this last movie, The Hateful Eight, I don't know of another movie that he used to, didn't had a score for. Actually, am I correct about that? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe did Django someone, Unchained? Did it have? I can't remember to be honest. Well, most of the time, at least he uses a soundtrack. Yeah, you but think about used, those famous scenes in Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs. You think, oh, Chuck Berry or. Um, you know, uh, or uh, what, Miserlou, uh, what's his name? Or Miserlou, uh, uh, you know, Don, uh, Don uh, you know, what's his you know, face? Uh, um, you know, what's his name? Um, um, uh, oh, gosh, uh, what's his what name? is it called? Uh, you know, it's a, uh, yeah, you know, well, anyway, uh, what's his name again? Don, 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 no, uh, Don, oh. D- Dick Dale, Dick Dale, Dick Dale, Dick there he goes. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so you think of that kind of stuff, but anyway, yeah, or what's, what's her name again? What, what's her name? I, I call her the Adele of the sixties. Dusty Springfield. Dusty Springfield. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or, or Steeler's Wheel actually. Yeah, exactly. But all these people he used. Okay. Anyway, that's the, we're just naming these people off, but it was just the soundtrack stuff. Um, but those, 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 they're used songs very effectively. Are very, you, you. They're just as memorable, almost those songs in being in the movie as some of the actual actors or you know dialogue because be- they're used effectively. Yes, um, they're not just uh, they're not tro- just thrown on there like that. Steeler Wheels uh, uh, song, you know, it's stuck in the be- middle of. A little- oh, I don't. Just a little oh, spoiler and list. Uh, it, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction at this point. I mean, uh, Reservoir Dogs at this point. Sorry. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, right. If you haven't seen There's Reservoir a, Dogs at this point. So I mean, the scene is Michael you know, Madsen. Get, I mean, you know, get yourself to Mars. You know, Get I mean, yourself to Mars and watch the, the Reservoir Dogs, yeah. you know, because that is a really good movie. Anyway, the scene that 
uh, the, the that's being you the Stewart's Michael Madsen is what is it what's the song called again uh, stuck in the middle stuck with in the middle with you Michael Madsen's taking a sweet time and he's gonna cut this guy his captor cap his captee he's gonna cut his ear off basically and it's used very good it's very well it's not a transition too it's not a transition it's not the beginning of the film it's not the end of the film and he's talking in it too but it's just it heightens that it's complementary. It's a very the, it's a cool sort of um, you know uh, juxtaposition of of this song versus what's actually going on in the right, scene. Yes, it's, very it's, good, Nikki. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, but also, you know, if for those of you that like a little trivia, Steeler's Wheel um, actually the lead singer was a Jerry Rafferty who went on to. Uh, achieve some solo fame for uh, you know on Baker or Baker Street the song Baker Street you know you know that song you know and that's a good song uh, um, it's very good for a saxophonist yeah but uh, anyway um, I just wanted to get back to TV a little bit because you know there's a, a trend right now with a lot of a lot of comedy, comedy series. series right now like uh, 30 Rock. People love this show, and I think it would be funny, except they overuse the music so much, and the music's not just overused, but it's it's, it's cheesy, cheesy music. music. It's cheesy music. Sorry, it's, I don't want to disparage. I don't like to, to be disparaging, but... But it is... It's, it's just, it's I gotta cheesy. say, it's like, like this, uh, you know... It's this happy-go-lucky like, type do, 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 of... Right, it's, it's kind like, of like that kind of music where it's like... Sort of like, oh, it's whimsical and like... But it's Cute, not. It's funny, just but, totally cheesy but it's music. Like, and why are you doing that? Like the scenes are fu- like I think the comedy is really funny in that show, especially like you know I mean Tracy Morgan. Tracy hilarious. Morgan is always super hilarious, you know. And but it's uh, just they use this music, and it's kind of like, well, you're just making this show bad. You're making it a bad show right now, you know. Right. It, it's actually kind of hard for me to watch that show, and and completely give it a thumbs up because I'm just like this, the music really just kind of distracts you from enjoying the, sh- the, right. enjoying the show. I don't want to, I hate disparaging people. I don't well, like, doing you know, that, but I mean, it, we're not, we're not mentioning the composer. I mean, I know who the, I know the guy's name actually, I'm not going to say his name, but um, I know, but I mean, you know, it's kind of, you know, anyway, I just will say though, it's like, and I'm sure, you know, he's a very capable composer. I just think, well, why, I, no, why Max, is this don't, happening? You don't have to, you know, uh, we're not disparaging him personally. You you don't have to be like that for every episode. You don't have to like, you, you can be honest with your feelings, you know? I mean, you, you don't, uh, I don't know. Anyway, just the point is like, this kind of thing shouldn't be done, you know? Right, 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 right. Well, you, in this case, you are disparaging the composer because no, you I said know, the music itself is cheesy. You know, okay. Uh, it, it is though. I don't know. I, I it just. It is cheesy though. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I, there, a lot of movies are doing this kind of music too, and I think it's really cheesy. It's, it's kind like, of a thing it's that a weird happens. Trend right it now. Kind of happens a lot in in Disney films, actually. Mm-hmm. Or, for instance, in the Chronicles of Narnia, uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I remember. If something lighthearted happens, they have to play this lighthearted music, and it just makes it really cheesy, you know. And it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, just quit it, you know. Yeah, quit, quit it. Um, you know, not and, that lighthearted music can't be good. It can be good. It's just, uh, you know, I just I don't need to be told when something is lighthearted. I know when it's lighthearted. And you know, there's a trend right now. And also, like I know this. Is, sometimes a, the lighthearted music can be just cheesy. There's up, a there's you know? a trend right now. Where even in like plays, they'll start using music at weird spots where it's like, why in you plays? Using- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what play? Uh, some of the plays that you know uh, I saw or did in Berkeley uh, when we were as students. Okay, at but Eastern. that's Berkeley. No, or but like musicals even. Okay, but there's, musicals there's are certain, different things. You know, I know it sounds weird to say, oh, the score for a musical is overused, but it can be. It can be. You know, sometimes. Even for a musical, I don't think when there's dialogue, when there's dialogue, plain and simple, there shouldn't be music uh, being played. I'll give over you an it. example. Um, this just the show just ended in January, and after a long time on Broadway, 
uh, Jersey Boys. Um, Max saw it. No, on I saw Broadway. it. It's actually not. Ba- I, I liked it. Uh, it was an entertaining show, and I, saw, uh, I usually the movie. don't like mu- mu- jukebox musicals, but this one's a little bit different because it is about it's about the lives, the lives of, of the, the four, four seasons, seasons. and so Jinx, yeah, rightfully so, they have to use their music. So I I, I accept that uh, uh, you know them using the music, but usually. It ends up being a little contrived, you know, in a the way, musical. Sure, yeah. Uh, like Mamma Mia. Or, or, or like oh, a, or, or, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I don't know. Oh, that's fine, you know. Or Across the Universe, you know. Um, right. Anyway. Uh, Jersey it's, Boys, It's literally though, changing the original meaning of the songs or the Or it's just being contrived songwriter. in the sense it's like, okay. We have to build I a story around I know what song, song is going to happen now because, like... Obvious, yeah, exactly. They're building a story around the songs, and it's just kind of, which actually can be kind of cool in a way, but it's usually done in a, not a great way. I, I think when you build a story around the songs first, then it's inevitable for the plot to become a little contrived. Right, you're right, right, right. Usually musicals, the songs are created around the plot, you know? Yeah, it's like... Oh, there needs to be a song at this moment. Or they develop, or they help develop the plot, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, in any event, Jersey Boys, uh, and while I thought it was a good sh- show, what it was an- a little annoying about it was, I don't think there was a moment, or very rarely was there a moment where there wasn't music at all. And basically during the dialogue, you know, there was just the kind of transitionary music, uh, which was... It, weird because there was dialogue still going on and it was like god it was just it's exhausting actually what it happens is it becomes it, exhausting and it's like it also it makes, makes it the, the actual songs it makes the actual <coughs> songs not as um uh memorable when they happen because it's like when the time that the song happens you're just thinking it, it, it I was makes them less special it makes them less time. special yeah i mean i was and already it, listening it, to music and why is, it, it's yeah. also like it, it just makes the scenes with dialogue more phony. I mean, it's like if you had trouble with a musical already for people breaking a song, it's kind of like, oh, if there's music like playing, but this goes for like movies too. If there's music playing behind dialogue, it's kind of like, this is just, this isn't real, you know? Yeah. Although, I mean, okay, I, I don't know. Now I mean, here's that's the a thing about thing it to say, is opera. Okay. You know, the thing is opera has music all the whole time, basically. Uh, although there is silences, just so we, you know, there are silences. I that, mean, that's what a great. Not all opera has music all the way through. No, I know, but the a magic lo- flute doesn't. Uh, well, okay, we can get into this actually a little bit different. I mean, there's something called recitative in some operas that is one of the um, defining characteristics. I guess. It's one of the characteristics of many operas, um, but not all operas. That doesn't define. That doesn't make. Just or, because there's music all the way through doesn't necessarily make it, you know, there, there's a, some people argue between what is an opera and what is a musical. Ultimately, what it comes down to is who's producing it and whatever you want to call it, actually. And I would honest. say the style of, of performance, too, is a little... Sort of, but yeah, usually there's a certain characteristics of the style. Of no, this. it's true. Like we saw recently, we saw Sweeney Todd, but it was performed by the SF Opera and it was done by opera singers and it was a little different you know and personally i i think it it was not as good it was not as good when it's sung in that operatic style um you know i think steven sondheim's music is is meant to be sung in a a different kind of way i suppose well uh sweeney todd though has a sort of an operatic voice i feel um anyway sometimes even in west side story their song their music they sing a lot of times in a sort of operatic voice um but that's not an opera. I mean, really, what it comes down to is just, you know, whatever you want to call it, actually. Because there's rock operas, you know. Tommy's a rock opera, and that style is, you know... And you know, same with Jesus Christ Superstar. And, um, Hair is technically, a, apparently, a rock opera. Uh, Although, uh, it's You know, weird. and there's, a, there's an opera it's called... It's weird to call the, it a rock opera. I mean, I guess Jesus Christ Superstar is more of a rock opera, because there's not really any dialogue. It's all sung through, right? Right, and there's a, a, an opera called, by John Adams, called... Uh, I, I was, was looking, looking at the ceiling, ceiling and, and then, then I saw, saw the, the sky. sky. And the the way the songs are sung in that are more akin to what one might think of as a musical mm-hmm. theater style, style of singing. However, I was looking it up recently, and I think what John Adams even calls it is a song play or something like that. 
So he doesn't even call it an opera. It's very cool. Very good music to that. Very good. Thing, you know? Oh, especially the theme. Um, oh, but other songs too in that right. too. But the, the theme, I was looking at the ceiling. Oh. I was looking at the ceiling. I was, I was looking, looking at, at the ceiling. ceiling and, and then, then I, I saw, saw the sky. sky. Okay, anyway. Da, 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 da. It's very oh, But neato. there's also it's very in neato. general. Or, and then um, <laughs> there's that other song. Uh, God, that. That well, other it, song's so good. Okay. Oh, my God. Anyway, by the way, th- it also depends on the tradition of the opera house. For instance, the opera... We're, we're really okay, just want to finish there, though, real quick. The opera comique in, in France, in Paris, uh, where the famous um, oh, Carmen God. was premiered uh, by Georges Bizet, uh, did not originally have recitative, which is, you know, that dialogue that is sung that we see in opera, you know? Um, it's not the song's you know, like the arias and stuff it, or, or the choral pieces. It's sort of the, uh, the, the dialogue, sung dialogue. Okay, come on. And, Jeez, and okay. the tradition at that opera house was they just had dialogue. They didn't have sing the recitative. And then when it went on tour after Bizet died, um, then some other composer added recitative instead. And what's just funny- Just to clearly define our terms, recitative- is For that you know, sung it's, dialogue? It's sung dialogue. It, like what I said, Max. What are you doing? You stop interrupting me, or something like that. You know, but I, mean, I have a point to say. And anyway. it's not really a song, but it's like sung dialogue, essentially. Anyway, but anyway. So, uh, but what's funny though is the guy who composed the recitative will later be, or maybe at the same time, was one of Claude Debussy's teachers. In fact, I don't know if you knew that. This is getting a little esoteric. Claude Debussy is a French was a French composer, very good. If the you best, if maybe maybe the maybe one, maybe the best, maybe the best, maybe, the best. maybe. that's a, arguably arguably. Uh, but I love I love oh, Debussy. He's very good. He's mm. very good. But um, um, anyway, so just overuse of music. You know, just don't do it. You know, right? I so, mean, but uh, anyway, you were talking about current television shows. I mean. Uh, what, what other ones? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say a lot of dramas these days are not doing that, which is good. Like, oh, like Game Mad of, Men. Mad Men or Game of Thrones. Or Game of even, Thrones, yeah. You don't really hear overuse of music in that show at all because they, the writers and directors really trust their audience. They really trust the material, actually. They trust their own material. They yeah. trust their own material speak for itself i think when that's that's when it comes down to it when music is overused the director or writer just doesn't trust their material enough doesn't trust the actors enough to pull off the right the, actors, the, the needed emotion to be conveyed right and so it they diminishes need, the role of the writing and the acting and the directing and the directing uh when you Overuse music, and I don't like it. Not one bit. Um, and I think that's all we have to say on the subject. And the final, what was the final word, Nikki? Uh, I'm just trying to think of if there's anything else I wanted to say about this. You know, our older brother actually did his his honors thesis in college was about this subject, and it was a long. So he had a lot to say about right, it. and he kind of feels. Which I think I, I agree with as far as movies go. Although I, he doesn't, I don't know if he brings this up the, the fact that it was in the 50s and like some older movies that they overused music, but he kind of felt that the start of the mid 90s really the started, mid-90s trend of, started of, that of, trend. Like and, you really see it in Titanic. That's like Titanic, a marker, yeah. a big marker of the way um, movies, movies started, started in, you know. Of, of when music started to be over and used But, you know, that's not to either. say all movies are not like that. I mean, movies that came out... Re- a movie that came out recently is Moonlight, actually. It does not overuse music, and I think that it uses it effectively, actually. Or, or, or oh, I wanted to say this. Sometimes, you know, like uh, No Country for Old Men, it's almost... Which is a Coen Brothers movie, and I, I love the Coen Brothers. They're one of the best... You know, they're, they're, they're a couple of the best filmmakers of all time. Right, although but they, I, No they, Country for they, Old Men... They, 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 you can barely... There's almost no music, but it almost seems like, and I'm going to go against the grain on this... Or it, against it, yourself. Oh, It almost seems like it's a little too forced that there's no music, and almost as if 
oh, maybe certain parts could have used music or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, I understood what they were doing. I, I'm hard-pressed to find a movie by them that I don't think was made well. You know what I mean? In other words, I may not have agreed with their intention or on a taste level, I might not like certain things, but I will always say that they make, they, they are good at what they do, you know? Sure. They are always good at what they do. Yeah. Or at least good at what they do. And they're, they've they're done great. some of our favorite films the, of all time, you know? The Hudsucker's Proxy. The Hudsucker, Hudsucker Proxy. Proxy. Um, you Bart know, Fink. The, the Big Lebowski is probably top five material for best comedies of all time. Um, but, you know, you know, I don't know. It's just like some of these films like Titanic. I guess James Cameron is like a, a big... James Cameron, yeah. He Although, just does that a lot. Is, I don't know why... I mean, James Cameron... But he used to not, you know, he used Terminator, to not Terminator, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Right? That's one, one of the best great. films of all time. Or like, um, you know, Aliens. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. I don't know what happens. Sometimes when... Although Terminator 2 is a big budgeted film, I, I just... Part of it, though, I hate to say it because I think Steven Spielberg can be very good director, actually, but... I feel like he kind of maybe started a trend, actually. No, Nikki, do you agree with me maybe, on that? Maybe I think maybe Jurassic Park maybe started, you know. Well, or also music maybe too, even you know? I mean Schindler's List maybe would did that. No, you, no, no. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I do mean, think like the way ending of that movie is a bit saccharine, but if you cut out the way ending, it's a great, great. It's movie. a very it's good. A very, oh, that's a great movie. movie. I mean, it's it a great is. Movie. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I, maybe I'm mis- they mis- should, mis- they mis- misremembering. They shouldn't have had so. that that way ending thing. And there. I understand he wanted to pay his respects. You know, but I understand that. It just that. becomes a little saccharine. It just becomes a little like okay, a little too saccharine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like hitting you over the head with it. You know, right, you know. right. Right, right, right. Um, um, yeah. Doesn't really have to do with music Although, as much. You know, yeah. So I, I mean, may, maybe I'm maybe I'm going out. To, maybe it's a little. Maybe I shouldn't say Steven Spielberg. You know, maybe I shouldn't say that. I, anyway, maybe the I'm point wrong is about like maybe uh, just filmmakers in general. In general, uh, s- started um, just overusing music in the yeah. mid '90s onward. You know, right? Um, Although, as I said. It's not happening, you know, all the time nowadays. I feel like, you know, there's a maybe of a renaissance or, uh, you know, maybe it's like the younger filmmakers back then who detested that type of thing are now making you know, the films now. And they're like, no, we're making it the way did, we like you know, it. Uh, uh, you know, you got your recent uh, Academy Award winner for Best Director, uh, Damien Chazelle, who did who directed La La Land and, and Whiplash. And he... You can tell that he's he was a musician at one point, and he was he was a a, a drummer, and um, he has a real appreciation for music, and he does not overuse the music at all in in either of his two big films. Um, he uses it right, he uses it well, and um, he just uses it effectively sometimes for these really really cool montage scenes oh. including the end whoa, 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 including one of the most sh- beautiful montage sh- scenes i've i've ever seen in film which sure. happens in la la land no, yes spoiler nikki please what? do not I, I don't know how that that's a real spoiler it doesn't matter i mean you know i just don't want i'm not t- i'm just saying there's a sp- cool montage scene anyway um, I know, but, but also I just, in whiplash spoiler alert in whiplash say, also I, like you really alert. see how much of an appreciation for music he has and uh the music is used very well and it's not it's never used to cover up any dialogue you know and that's uh that's a good thing anyway uh so um so what's the final word the final word i think we already said the final word (laughs) actually if you're a director if you're yeah if you're director make sure Make sure you don't overuse your music, huh? <laughs> if you watched Full House, you would get that. And that is something we were referencing earlier. You know, if if have faith in your material, have faith in your actors. And if you don't, then perhaps... And have faith in yourself. If you don't, then don't use music to cover that up. Rather, revise the work. Or, you know, sometimes very good editing can help actually in you know, a film. Sure. You sure. know, and that way you're actually utilizing Jaws. Yeah, Jaws. Jaws that's almost well wasn't known. did not get released because, because it, it you know, they just there were a lot of mistakes that were made and 
mistakes were made. Uh, and in, uh, there in, was a uh, in, uh, woman. Uh, was this, there was a I woman. Her she her was in, like an assistant editor at, for Universal, and she came up with a great way she to edit she, the they, film. She said, I can save it. I can she save said, I film. can save this film. And then she became, she just, she, I think she got. She became a star well, in, 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 in the editing field, world. I guess, or something like that. Uh, anyway, so the fi- that's the final word. And uh, so don't so overuse music. Don't and, overuse music, it's plain and simple. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Splitting Hairs with Max and Nikki. And look out for our next episode.